Street Cop is billed as a gritty, realistic look at cops who work on the street, mostly battling drug traffic. The documentary is set in Roxbury. The cops profiled are headquartered at Area B. Scene after scene in this cinema verite film depicts gripping and often violent action on the part of the police and the apprehended. We asked longtime Roxbury activists Georgette Watson and Ben Haith to view the film and react. Both felt strongly that the police showed disrespect to the community. The way that they treat the people in the community, going in with sledgehammers and, and uh, um, upsetting the youth there and, and displaying uh, uh, people all over the street, when I know if they go into another community, they knock on the door, they ring the bell, they say, this is the police. They're not going up there with no sledgehammers. Um, after looking at this, we have to, we have to look at what, what the police is really doing to our community. Are they helping or are they helping to destroy it? Both also express concern that Roxbury is portrayed as an entire community of drug dealers. I'm very shocked and saddened that um, whenever someone wants to do a, a drug plight story that they always seem to go right in the inner city into the black community and working with my program I know that that drug calls come from the whole city. What I saw was very disturbing because we just we saw what was described as foot soldiers and, we, and they're, they're attacking our neighborhood and, and along the lines of, uh, of uh, soldiers at warfare. At BK1 Hall and go to 7. Community activists say they know full well what police face here, but they point out that drugs are also prevalent in other communities. A quick walk through Roxbury's Dudley Square reveals some of the inherent ironies. It's such a real bad example to have massive drug dealing that is right across the street from the police station. And yet, they would run into the community, bash doors with hammers, gets a nickel bag of marijuana and not curtail the drug dealing, the massive drug dealing that occurs right across the street from them. It's a tough place to live though, I'll tell you, you know? If I was if I was poor and if I was black and I was living down here, I'd probably be out there selling drugs myself, trying to make a buck to get out of here. You know, it's no bag and being poor, it's no bag and being black, I'm sure. No Comments like this one by Sergeant Stanley Philbin are seen by Watson, Haith, and others as reflecting racist attitudes. Also, scenes like this one with Officer Robbie Flynn, born and raised in South Boston. We do need uh, uh, police in the community, but we need police that understands the community, that culturally understands it. Uh, when you have police officers that were born and raised in South Boston, I think there's a cultural conflict when they come in. When you have a police officer that says being black is no bargain, I think that that is a person who has a, a, a very negative attitude towards black people and then coming in and working in the community. Uh, from a police officer's standpoint, I thought it was very effective and very realistic. Larry Brown of Boston's Minority Police Association says this kind of action may be tough for people to understand, but necessary. When you're dealing with people dealing drugs, number one, it's a legal activity. Number two, these days a lot of people are carrying guns. That's one of the biggest problems we have in our community is guns. You have everything from 22 automatics up to Uzi submachine guns. Now anybody that uh, would expect a police officer to put his life on the line, knowing what might be behind that door, that's the only way that you can effectively uh, deal with drugs and to ex execute a court uh, search warrant. Brown says it's possible that some might see racist overtones in street cop, but he says he is most concerned about street cops getting support. And he says the community will have to get tough to get results. But without the community coming out and saying, this is what we want, we don't want any compromise. If we have drugs in this area, we want them eradicated. If they move to another area, then we want the police officers to take themselves and their resources to that area and keep on moving them. And finally, something's going to happen. But until then, it's just going to be business as usual. For the 10 o'clock news, I'm Callie Crossley. Get up, pack it in, let me 
begin I came to win, battle me, that's a sin I won't ever slack up, punk, you better back up Try and play the role and you're the whole crew will act up Get up, stand up, come on, come on throw your hands up If you got the feeling, jump up, touch the ceiling Monks, let's a funk flow, someone's fucking jump Yo, I'll bust them in the eye, and then I'll take the punks home Feeling funky, amps in a trunk And I got more rhymes than this cops that are dunking Donut shop, show up, I got props From the kids on the hill, plus my mom and my pops I came to get down, I came to get down So get out your seat and jump around Jump around Jump up and get down Jump around Jump around Jump up and get down Jump up, jump up and get down Jump, 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 jump Everybody jump, 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 jump I'll serve your ass like John McEnroe If your girl steps up, I'm smacking a hoe Word to your moms, I came to drop bombs I got more rhymes and the bottles got zombs And just like the prodigal son, I've returned Anyone stepping on me, you'll get burned Cause I got lyrics, but you ain't got none If you come to battle, bring a shotgun, shotgun. But if you do, you're a fool, cause I do to the death Trying to step to me, you take your last breath I got the skill, come get your fill Cause when I shoot the gift, I shoot the kill I came to get down, I came to get down So get out your seat and jump around Jump around Jump up and get down Jump around Jump around Jump up and get down Jump up, jump up and get down Jump, jump Listen to the sound that comes I jump around I'm no clown, I get down to the funk Listen to the wig out and step to the red there Cause I'm here the P to the E to the T E rockin' the runs in your stockin' so honey put the lock in chillin' with the house of pain blood stains the ground huh, I jump around I'm the cream of the crop I rise to the top I never eat a pig cause a pig is a cop I better yet a Terminator like Arnold Schwarzenegger trying to play me out like as if my name was Sega but I ain't going out like no punk bitch get used to one style yo when I might switch it up up and around then buck buck get down without your head and then you wake up in the dawn of the dead I'm coming to get ya I'm coming to get ya Spitting out lyrics, homie, I wet ya I came nigga down, I came nigga down So get out your seat and jump around Jump around Jump up and get down Jump around Jump around Jump up and get down Jump up, jump up and get down Jump, 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 jump Everybody jump, 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 jump Everybody jump, 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 jump Everybody jump, jump, jump I can't tell my parents. They both are Catholic, and they've told me before that they would send me away. My whole family would be ruined because they both, everyone in my family would all lose respect for me. And that's what, why. what did the judge say to you when he the said? The judge asked me why I can't tell my parents what would happen and things to that extent. Did he say he'd let you know when he would render a decision? No, he asked me those quick about. No, when he'd give you a decision whether you could be aborted or oh, not. Oh, oh. I'm supposed to go back Monday and then whatever comes about then. Uh, it's up to the students. You know, I'm not a dictator. You know, the Federation is not a dictatorship type of organization. It involves the students. The students say what they're going to do. Well, how do you think they feel about it then? At this time, you know, I couldn't. It'd be revealed at a later date. 
Do you think anything is going to come of the meetings on Thursday and Friday? Really, the Black Student Federation sees and the parents see that you know nothing will be accomplished. And if something is accomplished, you know, all well and good. I think it's going to be a thing just like it was in '68, '69, '70, and so on, where they just don't do anything at all. What's going to make it different then? Uh, the students will make it different. When? We'll reveal that when we first opened down here, there was a male that came out here with us the day we opened, and he was here for a couple of months, and they moved him over to Lincoln. And that's why I think it's coincidental. After they moved him, we're all females. Some do, yes. <laughs> but it's not because I'm female. It's mostly they are surprised because I'm young. The Sudbury branch of West Newton Savings also has a fully female staff, as does the Framingham Trust branch right down the street here in Sherburne. So a fully female staff is not that exceptional. All the vice presidents of West Newton Savings are male. But given the bank's commitment to promotion within the system, that's a situation that's likely to change. Roger Goodrich, New Center 5 in Sherburne. Now, some people would say that stripping is not really entertainment, that uh, there's a, a sexual coercion, sexual overtones to that, and they, they don't see what is the entertainment in that. Well, we just won Supreme Court ruling that it's considered an art all over the state and legal to strip completely nude, so I would say that um, those people are a little narrow-minded and old-fashioned. Now, there's a stigma attached to stripping and to women who strip. Do uh, you think it's fair? No, it's not fair. It's put me through college. It's helped put my husband through college. It's taken us on an extended trip around the country. It's afforded me a lot of things in life. Cantorial music was a calling of mine. It's probably still today my first love. But being a cantor per se is not. A, uh, a cantor in a Jewish synagogue has a lot more responsibilities than just singing from the pulpit. Uh, I was finding myself uh, singing less and less and teaching bar mitzvahs and dealing with a lot of uh, neurotic bar mitzvah mothers and uh, God bless them all, so uh, no offense meant. but. I got to a point where I said, well, I've had it. Surely there's much more that I can do with my life and with whatever gift I may have than I can by singing to uh, 50 people on a Saturday uh, and uh, living from one high holiday to another high holiday. Well, I came into the business uh, knowing what goes on in the musical world. Uh, I am not a big drinker. I uh, don't know how to pour a draft beer. I've had to learn this and I've learned it from the bottom up. Even though I was at the top and in command, uh, I went in and I uh, ran the bar, I made my mistakes, I uh, did my own bookkeeping, and uh, it was a, a costly few months, but it was the only way that I felt that I could control my business. love the people. Wherever people want me to play, I play. I don't ask questions. They said, I want you to play here. My manager says they're paying you this much money. Are you satisfied? I said, I'm satisfied. And I go. Um, many performers say, oh, I don't want to play here and I don't want to play there. But I play wherever people want me to go because, listen, people are my life. And people 
are, are all that I am. And if I try to to shy away from that, then I'm not really a performer. A performer is like a doctor. He goes wherever he's wanted. That's all. I'll be very honest with you. I have more of my old members in here on Friday night than I did at the temple. <laughs> Although, uh, I mean, I'd love to get up and hold a quick uh, service. You know, service will be held from 8.30 to 9, and then we go into Chubby Checker. But uh, it may not be a bad idea to work it the other way. You know, take the nightclub rock and roll music, the top 40 sound, and put it into the temple. Maybe they'll get a lot more people going in there. Provide an atmosphere that relates more with what's going on today. First of all, the rats are there, the roaches. On top of that, the ceilings are falling, leaks continuously, walls caving in, steers, trash all over the place. He doesn't do anything about anything. Well, for one, we have uh, falling ceilings and there's uh, leaks. The floors are bowing up there, you know, the boards are coming apart. And the railing on the back porch has uh, blew off in a windstorm on my apartment. And he refused to fix these things. Bad shape, and uh, they've been testing several children now for the lead poisoning. And I don't, I'm not sure, but I think they have found one of uh, the children Boy. from his building that have it. And we just want to have something done about this man, get him taken care of the way he should be. As a tenant of one of his apartments, what are the problems with your particular efficiencies? I have called him numerous times, and I, he's come up for his rent, and I've refused to pay him rent uh, for this reason, and he still will not fix anything. So I, I don't know what to do about it other than what we're doing. Thank the you. only thing I can think of. Yeah. Okay. And what are some of the problems in the house that you live? There, there are roaches, and when the... Um exterminator comes when he brings the roach when he brings the stuff to take away the roaches more roaches come and what do you want done I want them to make up to I want I just want to move away why do you want to move away do you not like the place that you live in no I don't like it uh, do you feel that the landlord the person that owns the house should do anything to fix it for you yes what specifically do you want fixed the whole house we're leaving Thank you. You're welcome.
<laughs> Cowman wanted. <laughs> what What are some of the complaints that you have with your living quarters? Just doesn't care. He comes for his rent, and that's it. So what do you want done? I want a decent apartment to live in. I got ten children, and I need it. Do you feel that you're getting your money's return uh, for the rent that you're paying? Hell no, I ain't getting nothing. Not even a decent bed to sleep in. You go to bed at night, you can't sleep. You're scared the rat's gonna come right out. They walk the floor now, they're eating the bread, and they just take over the place. You may as well marry one of them. Then they have anything in the house that was gonna happen pretty soon. We're loaded with them. The first was a huge traffic problem, both moving and parked, illegal parked cars. The second was rampant prostitution in the neighborhood. The third, crimes of violence. And the fourth, or actually there are maybe five, vandalism and noise and uh, acts of disturbance of the peace that occurred usually <laughs> in the late evening. The poor people are talking about their uh, noises. They're down the street. They're not on top of Jack's. I'm on top of Jack's and I can sleep nights. <laughs> the thing that troubles me uh, is not only the prostitution, but the things it brings with them. For instance, I've been kept awake at night because of the traffic pattern that goes around and around uh, with the white hunters. And uh, I've also witnessed what Dr. Gagan has said, people coming down, yelling and harassing the prostitutes, so that does create an air of violence. <laughs> talking about my responsibility. I have a responsibility as somehow when uh, things start to go well and you are successful, you do have a responsibility not just to yourself. It starts first with here. And I think my family comes second, my career maybe third. But all the, the people in there, and I like the idea of holding on to that. Um, I do that on the stage. My girls are already, they already have their femininity. They want beauty and lipstick and things in it. It's super because I'm married the other day, and I don't know if he's as clear as I am about what makes things work. And it's not just the product or the talent. It's something very intangible that we have not, we cannot really hold on to. It's that little bit of magic, that, that little bit of energy or vibrations or whatever you call it. Stevie has a, a lot of it, you know. I'd like to give him some of what Stevie has, you know. It, it, it has... A, it has a lot to do with loving, a lot to do. I spend a lot of time talking to Stevie. I don't spend as much time with Marvin. He hides a lot. We can't find him. But it's not just the product. Because there's a lot of good product out there. To expose Mayor White, uh, Project Turnoff, that has been relocated from Whittier Street Clinic into Boston City Hospital. Um, we're here to say that uh, uh, Project Turnoff, which is now in City Hospital, is not serving the principles not serving the purpose of the black community, that they are pushing methadone in the black community, and there is no control over the drug program. We are here to, uh, to determine whether uh, Project Turnoff should be located in uh, the Franklin Square House, and uh, the people of the black community of the South End Drug Council is saying that, uh, that Project Turnoff should not be located in the uh, Franklin Square House for the simple reason there is no drug control, that they don't serve, uh, the uh, don't serve the purpose of the black community, that they, that they are pushing drugs in the black community. And this is a form of uh, pushing drugs uh, without going through uh, the physical examination, which is a uh, urine test to test whether these people uh, have, a, have been addicted to heroin, I've uh, been addicted to any type of drugs. And we understand very clearly that uh, 
that these people attain this methadone uh, by quantities. And it brings it back into the community and pushes and sells it. And we see this as being a form of genocide uh, against the people of our community. Uh, we are exposing male white drug program is uh, not serving our need. We understand very clearly that the uh, project turnoff cannot uh, be located in the Franklin Square House for a simple reason. The people of the cathedral project uh, do not wish to have it there because uh, because project turnoff I know what you're upset about, but now you're talking to, you know, for the camera. What are you upset about? What's going on? Well, of what happened yesterday. Go ahead. Explain it. And, um, go ahead, talk. Go ahead. Come on. Go ahead. Say something. We, 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 we don't like I'm just, no. Hey, Bill. Why? Right here. All right. What do you want to know? Well, tell me what you said before. What you're upset about and what you want. Because niggas are coming from Roxbury to our school in East Boston and stabbing our friends and they think they can get away with this. And what do you want to happen? We want them out of East Boston and back to Africa where they belong. We don't want them in the school. We want them out. And we want them too much trouble. They want them were nice, this big. And they stabbed him. He could have died yesterday. If he did they die, all then it would have been there. That's why we want to get the we metal want, detectors. We want metal detectors and we want them out of the school. I can't help it. She's pushing me. Yeah, Were they here last year? Say something. Yeah. yeah. They've been pushing us around for three years and now they're going to shed blood. They should be able to go to school. They're all going to We're 
them all stay. They don't want us to. They don't want us to. We don't want them in our way. So we have to worry about going to school. We have to worry about. So our mothers have to make sure. Because we're gonna walk in petrified, thinking they're gonna stab us, walking down the hall. Nay. We don't go for that. So our mothers have to worry about us going to school, and wonder if we're gonna come home dead or alive. I know. Wonder if we're gonna come home with stitches all on our arms and knife wounds all over us, like a lion in a corner. Are, are, are any of are the white kids carrying knives now? In no, the no, 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 East Boston kids have class. They don't go around fighting when they really? fight with their fists. Really? That's right. Right. We didn't have no weapons. We had fists. We had fists. And still, you yes, yesterday, after the kids did that, our Robert Levantina, he still gave him a beating with his fist, not with a knife and not with a gun. After stabbed and all. After bleeding to death, he dragged him downstairs and he still gave him a beating. And he was walking pretty fast. After bleeding to death, he dragged him downstairs and he still gave him a beating. He was walking perfectly. Are your kids going to refuse to go to school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? We definitely refuse to go to school. I'm going to walk down the hall scared. I'm going to walk down the hall being scared, thinking someone's going to stab me. Our mother's home worrying over us. Will you be satisfied with metal detectors? Yeah. 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 If they don't get out, metal detectors better get in there. Uh, See, none of us will come. Really? I mean, we ain't going to walk around scared. I refuse to even go. I'll fail. I'll be stupid. Go to another school. And then it's all the school. They stop all the Okay. And, and another thing, alright? A brand new school in East Boston, the Umana, we pay for it, and guess who's in the school? All oh, niggas. They're in there destroying the place. I know, they destroyed the school. The school's three years old and it's already destroyed. To Rex. Really? We, we didn't I had even get a chance to get in there. And then they had I to went, go arrest. And you know what? I know a girl. Last year, she tried to get in the school. She was white. They wouldn't take her because they wanted black students in the school. Do you have friends who go to other parts of the city to school? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Madison Park. Madison Park. I, 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 I know a certain kid that quit school because he got sent to Madison and he couldn't go to his own high school. Really? Is he going to have the camera? Yeah. 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 And we're okay, sick of it. Don't hide that shit. Yeah. When we have the scan, it's gonna be a hassle. You might have to come in a certain time, they might have to change the schedule on, you might have to come in early and go out later. Because it's gonna take time going through the scans. Everybody's gonna be searched one by one. You don't go in piling, you go in one by one. So that's gonna make it a hassle. Now some kids, the kid, maybe the kids that are in now don't want it. But the kids that are out here, I don't know, if you all want a scanners. Yeah! Yeah! Scanners? Yeah. yeah! I come yesterday that when Scott said, when you was all in the auditorium, he said, anybody wants scanners, nobody said nothing. Because they're all the guys are in the lower so Everybody was, there. Everybody was gonna, you know, <laughs> It's too late read, now. Uh, it wasn't there. They're going to try today, maybe Monday, they're going to have scanners. And a scanner at this door, a scanner at the other door, and maybe either walk in or a scanner at the front door. That's going to be no more cutting no, out. Yeah, I know. And, that, and that's it? <laughs> no. What else, Wayne? Wayne, what's Wayne? What else? They have Wayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mark your brother. Now the kids, the kids that are in school now are nervous. They're all itchy and everything. No, no, it's no, half of the kids are out and half of the kids are in. It's almost even. There's 411 kids in there now, and there's 900 kids in the in the whole school. 900 to 1,000. So we got most of them out here. So most of the kids can go to school today because of what happened. Now, this school tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. If you just want to go, there won't be no skin to the door. So we'll that's up to you. That's your decision. Monday. Monday. You can go to school tomorrow. You can go in. You can go in. No There's not going to be no scanners. Yeah, you got to get mad at that. It's going to be the same thing. Why not? 
They're going to have... Uh, more security. Be more security. Be Anthony Albano will be the head man. 12 or 15 people. It's going to be extra walking around. To watches and everything. It's going to be, it's going to be more people in there tomorrow or Monday than there was in the future. So that's going to solve everything now? Be the yeah. thing. I hope so. Hey, it's not going to solve the racial problem. It'll solve a lot of weapons. Engineering made me sick. What was he saying? Because he didn't want the Joe Juan. Gary, Gary, Joe Juan. Address the whole school student body and the whole school. All right, whatever you want, tell me, because we have to go back and meet him. What possible is going to happen? Is that we're going to have a big assembly. All the kids are going to go to assembly. It's either going to be tomorrow or Monday. We don't know what it is. If anybody says no, any questions, ask. They want, and they're fools. Like if you want to scan, like what happened yesterday when he asked to scan, the people said nobody ready to hear. Why? I don't understand. Everybody wants to scan this now, but nobody wanted to smile when he, yesterday when he had the uh, assembly. So when he called the assembly, people talk one at a time and tell them what you want and maybe they'll get it done. That's all you can ask. That's all you can do. Not enough people. We know that. That's what we try to tell you. We know all this is because of what happened yesterday. We know that. If you want the skins, we can have them. We all vote the plan. Jody, go up here, Jody. Come on. They should just make the thing back the way it was. Well, nobody can hear you. Do you think it's fair for, for innocent blacks to be heard over this? No. It's not fair, because how would we like it? Yeah, this is my car. I'm doing a lot of Alright, this kid, this is the only one kid that's here. Uh, how have we been getting along? Have you ever seen all the weapons they have in school? We have it now. No, no, that's why we'll have this here. No. We'll stop the weapons. Stop all the weapons. But that's what happens if they want the scanners or not. Well, we'll have the scanners. I think, I, and I think as, as part of security, the scanners would be the best thing for the whole school. So for one bad one, we all go, you know, it'll be It'll be for the best for for the best. Yeah, we have that's to get up, get personal. in early and get so out later. So what if we don't have the scanners and it happens again? Would you rather no, not have the scanners and make it happen again? No. no. Alright, so he's got the truth with the scanners. You want the scanners, you don't want it to happen again. You gotta have the scanners. Every day. We're gonna, we're gonna try it for either a month or two. It's up to how you act. How many wants the scanners? Now use the back. Why don't you want the scanners? Who don't want scanners? Why don't you want them? Why we don't want scanners? Raise your hand. I said, what are you doing? Five test one two three four five five four three two one. Okay. T stand up. Take one. Five four three two one. Today the action shifted from South Boston to East Boston following a stabbing incident here at East Boston High School yesterday morning. The kids refused to go back into school because they were afraid of more violence today. They insist that the school officials put scanners at all the doors before they go back into the and take the five, four, three, two, one. The action shifted this morning from South Boston High School to East Boston High School after a stabbing incident here at East Boston yesterday. The kids said they wouldn't go back to school until some effort was made to put scanners at the door to prevent knives and other weapons from being brought into the school. <coughs> Well, let's see, we have to talk about all this. I'm more concerned about your safety than anything. I feel that if you think your life's in danger, or I'm in charge of security, that I'm going to make sure that you can walk to school without, the, without going like this, all right? Let's take care of, let's take care of safety first, then we'll take care of racial second, then we'll take care of everything else happening. What are you going to do?
looking at here is a big stretch of push in there. The rest are all white. Half of the, half of the Mayan Nordics are out here today. We don't know. We have no idea. That's what we're doing now. They, they don't have the equipment yet. That's why they're trying to get the equipment. So you can't just go up to them and start fishing them. Because it's not right for them. It's just, like if, it's just like if they come out here now and start fishing everybody here. I bet you uh, you fish anybody here, you find uh, nothing. Nothing. I'm telling you, nothing. But now if you fish the blacks now, you might find If you fish, if you fish women there now and a couple of us fish blacks, out of half the third of the blacks in there, I bet you maybe 10, 15 of them will have knives or whatever on them, switchblade or what or whatever. But now that they've signed up, raise the guys. They'll know if they get going right You want to do a quick interview with you? Channel 2? What? You rolling? Yeah. Come on, Gary, let's go make tell him. What's, what's the uh, the mood in the school right now? What's the situation? In the mood in the school, up. it's an uproar. The kids that are in there now are the, the blacks on, and the whites. The blacks are nervous. The whites, there's not too many whites in there. Most of the whites are out here today. But the kids that are out here now are frustrated. If they don't get what they want, it's going to be, it's going to continue again. Do you think that they'll be happy with the decisions to put scanners in the I hope so. How do you spell your last name? G O S S E L I N. G O S S E L I N. Uh, are you? Are you? What's? How are, how are you picked as as a leader? Because I'm a senior, I've been here four years, so I know how to school acts. I'm one of the bad guys in the box. Come on, Gary. Yeah, go inside. I'll be right in. I want you. I saw a silver streak around like a round disc, zooming through the skies, then slowing down, suddenly stopping for a few minutes, and then going on its way again. Yes, I do. With all the research today, it certainly puts a person to thinking that there must be something to it. I don't think so. I, I know here nothing, and I've seen nothing. Sure, I, I, uh, I believe in them. Uh... Uh, people say that they see him, I believe him. I think there's a great possibility that they exist. Have you ever seen one? No, but I'd like to. What do you think they might be? Well, I think there could be civilization on other planets. Well, maybe they see either a um, meteor or some fallen object from outer space. Uh, anything like that. But there's... Um, I don't think there's no flying saucers. Uh, no, I don't really believe in that. I don't think it's right. <laughs> I don't believe in it at all. Have you ever met anybody who thought they uh, had seen one? No, I never did. I never met one that seen it. I don't feel very comfortable in Boston. I don't feel very comfortable at all. I'm a citizen of this commonwealth, and I don't feel as if I'm a full citizen of this commonwealth. That's one of the reasons why I happen to be involved like I am. I am trying to educate people and trying to change things a little bit. But I don't think it's any easier to be a homosexual here in Boston as it is in, to be a homosexual in New York or San Francisco. People are people, and if people can't live together and, and blend together and uh, just live in a society. I wonder what this world is all about. They talk about constitutional rights. A gay kid has no constitutional are, rights. You know, all of maybe over a hundred years old. We're dealing with laws of um, unnatural acts, laws cri called crimes against nature. Uh, such laws really don't have any uh, real definitions in them, like the law, for instance, crime against nature. The law just states that the abominable and detestable crime against nature shall be punished by imprisonment by 20 years. Now, uh, the law doesn't state any definition. They don't tell you exactly what is a crime against nature. 
Uh, someone once suggested that uh, is cutting down a tree a crime against nature, which could very well be. Uh, as a matter of fact, this exact statute, well, the wording of the statute has been declared unconstitutional in both Florida and Texas by their state supreme courts. And um, the constitutionality of it hasn't been litigated in Massachusetts in the recent years. I've never seen or heard of a case where uh, to a married couple, let's say, or a heterosexual couple, has been prosecuted on um, either of those statutes. The other statutes we're dealing with uh, were fornication, and cohabitation, and adultery. I mean, we would put those statutes in the judicial hearing so that we would be consistent in our approach, that which is to uh, eliminate all criminal statutes where the sexual conduct between consenting adults is considered a crime. The church is opposed to it, and just about just about every legislator of every every person, if they're not educated to the fact of homosexuals and they're not aware of it, it's my in, it's my opinion that they would be opposed to it, just because that they don't know, they don't know. They they may be working next to homosexuals all day long but they have an idea of their mind of a certain stereotype of a homosexual that is just not the truth today. There is uh, statistics around. Um, I would say that people are, most people are opposed to this type of legislation because they think that um, in legalizing it, it, it these statutes as far as consenting adults is concerned, uh, first of all, it's going to be catchy. More people are going to try it which is not true. If you're, if you're gay, you're gay. If you're not, you're not. And it's just uh, people haven't been educated. They haven't been exposed to uh, that many homosexuals. If every homosexual in Boston would get up and say, I am a homosexual, and most of the people in your immediate surroundings would be very surprised and say, well, they have the same feelings we do. They look the same as we do. They react the same as we do. They have the same financial problems. They have the same uh, everything. I mean, they dress the same. It doesn't, you know, I think that's where the, the opposition comes from. It comes from people being uneducated. Nobody likes a homosexual. Nobody likes a queer. They discriminate against them in the areas of housing. They don't want them living in their neighborhoods. They discriminate them against them in the area of employment. And they discriminate against them socially. They just don't like them. And you will find that a lot of people, especially society, when they think of a homosexual, they think of a very immoral individual. When in reality, homosexuals have some of the highest moral conduct in the community. The laws against those victimless crimes that involve matters of private sexual conduct are not only repugnant, but clearly unenforceable. It is our hope and belief that attitudes are changing in this country, particularly in regard to homosexuality. We agree with St. Thomas Aquinas, who wrote over 700 years ago, private sin is different from public crime, and only the latter lies in the province of man-made law. Two gay people who want to buy a house together, and they go into a bank for a mortgage. A mortgage wouldn't give them a house, although they may be just as married let's say, in, the, uh, in a common law sense, as are two heterosexual, as a heterosexual couple. And they may be just as financially stable. We have clients here that have been together for over 17 years, and they get along terrifically, yet they can't get a mortgage with the both of them on it. Um, other areas uh, revolve from housing to, uh, well, I don't know if, if the president of HUB was denied a driver's license for seven years because of uh, because he was a homosexual. And got a, uh, there's just so many incidences that we don't even know about. They're afraid to come forward. People just uh, refuse to believe that I'm a, I'm capable of being a homosexual because they're thinking of the typical drag queen that they've seen on the street. Uh, they don't believe that uh, homosexuals wear coats and ties or act normal as the society puts it. A lesbian is a woman who is no man's property. 
A lesbian is a woman whose sexual identity and whose function in society are not dependent upon her ability to reproduce. A lesbian is a woman whose personhood refuses to submit to present day mythology surrounding her genitals, although society tries to cripple her personhood psychologically even when she manages to escape legal persecution. A lesbian is a woman to whom men are unnecessary and often useless. There's two major reasons why people dislike homosexuals. One, the fear of the unknown. They, people just have a normal fear of the unknown. They don't understand a homosexual and they want no part of it. The second reason is because of a person's uh, uh, sexual identity. They, don't want, they haven't come to terms with themselves. You will find that individuals that, uh, that have a sexual identity in which they're messing around in the homosexual area uh, are the ones that stand up and scream the loudest and the longest. Who are the people then who perform crimes against nature and unnatural acts? Well, according to Kinsey, it's 37% of the total white male population of the United States who has at least some overt homosexual experience to the point of orgasm between adolescence and old age. In situations that I've come up against, it's more, I call it more of an enticement. Police uh, place decoys, young, virile-looking state police officers in rest areas, let's say, and uh, they instruct them to enter into idle conversation with gay people and then take them further on into, uh, into the woods and wait for the gay person to make uh, a touching or, or lewd remarks to them or something like that and then arrest them at that point. Uh, now, if the gay person was there looking to pick up somebody, then you can't use entrapment as a good defense. But I would call it enticement, that if the, the police officer being there in plain clothes entices the gay individual to come up to him and to enter idle in conversation with him. And uh, the police, I believe, are promoting uh, prosecution instead of trying to eliminate it in some instances. A crime is presumed to have occurred traditionally only when there is both a miscreant and a victim. But our laws try to embrace a code that goes far beyond this standard to include crimes in which no one is victimized and no one is harmed. The definition of victimless crime by the National Council on Crime and Delinquency is behavior not injurious to others but made criminal by statutes based on moral standards which disapprove of certain forms of behavior while ignoring others that are comparable. This is a moralistic approach is that, uh, that society inflicts upon a homosexual is unreal uh, to such an extent that a lot of homosexuals uh, cannot adjust and quite a few of our number uh, commit suicide. The fears are tremendous. Uh, the pain that, they inf that society inflicts upon uh, a homosexual just because he is a homosexual is, is terrible. Absolutely terrible. Our telephone constantly rings with problems of an individual wanting, wanting to know exactly where his place is in society. He's been told all his life that it's wrong, and all of a sudden he finds out he is a homosexual. What does he do then? Take a gun to his head? I just think it's uh, going on too long, and uh, I don't think they'll ever impeach him. I don't think uh, President Nixon is doing anything new, you know, uh, it's just, uh, I think he's been acting just like, you know, most presidents, really, and uh, I, don't, I really don't believe he should be impeached. I feel that the president has brought this whole thing up on himself. He gets what he deserves. He's put the country at a great expense, and uh, there's no other alternative but to impeach the man. Uh, not only is he to blame, but the whole of Washington. The whole of Washington, the same thing. Uh, it's like any organization after it gets so big that you need a, it needs an enema. I feel injustice has been done, and if the small little person did it, they would have to pay for their deeds. I'm very glad that the House voted for the impeachment. I'm not sure of what the vote was. I hope it was overwhelming and that it will go all the way through because I think Richard Nixon has done about as much as he can to this country and have this country stand for it.
I think that um, presidents have been dishonest all along, you know, in, in various ways. But I think that it's, I think it'd be good if he was impeached because it would kind of put an end to that. You know, it'd be the, it might cut down on future presidents' dishonesty. Some of the feelings expressed in our poll are easily explained since Massachusetts voted overwhelmingly against Nixon in 1972 and many of its elected representatives have repeatedly called for impeachment. But other opinions point to the fact that no matter how serious a man's offenses, under the Constitution he is presumed innocent until proven guilty. From Copley Square, Mary McKay, Channel 5 News. I certainly hope for the good of the country that he's impeached. I should think they should impeach the whole house. And if I have anything to say, I go right there myself and tell myself right to their face. And I think, I think the president is doing a wonderful job. I think the whole inquiry is partisan, and I believe that Nixon shouldn't be impeached. I think it's a kangaroo court, and I think they should do more about what's happening to us as far as emergency crisis and uh, different things that you should concentrate on the people of America instead of trying to hang one man without definite proof, I believe. I don't know what information they had, but uh, I believe a person is innocent until he's proven guilty. I think they went overboard in being fair and uh, that's probably what took so long. My reaction is that why did it take so long? And what is your opinion on impeachment? Very prudently. What is your opinion? Well I think that they're going to come to the right decision. I think that they're progressing in the right direction. Do you think the president will be convicted? Well I have an idea that he will. Good. Thank you very much. What is your opinion on the action of the House Judiciary Committee or on impeachment in general? Well, I think that the, they're searching for the truth and they're going to find it because, you know, I don't think everybody's as messed up as people think they are. Uh, you know, we've got some good men in there and I think they'll find the truth. Okay, good. Thank you very much. So, what uh, is your opinion? They, they, they don't know what they're doing and I'd like to go over there and tell them myself. Okay, would you start that just once more? Tell what? us again and, and amplify on your point a little bit, please. What, what, what did you ask me in the first place? What is your opinion of the action taken by the House Judiciary Committee? I feel about it. Good. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Now, things he's done wrong, but he hasn't done that many things wrong. Do you think ultimately the president will be convicted or, or will be found, uh, will be exonerated in the Senate? I think if he's impeached in the House, he won't be, he won't be uh, found guilty in the Senate. Good. Thank you. What is your opinion on the action of the House Judiciary Committee and why? I would like to see them go ahead with the impeachment in all sincerity. Why do you say that? What is your opinion, sir? Good. Thank you very much. I wouldn't convict anyone until they had their own hearing. So you think the Judiciary Committee acted unfairly then? Well, I don't think the uh, trial is uh, being conducted fairly. I don't think the, uh, I think it's all political and that the, uh, the Democrats uh, are voting for, uh, along their own line. And, and uh, as far as uh, Senator Hogan, I think running for governor is the reason why he uh, voted against uh, Nixon or feels that he's uh, guilty. And uh, most of the things happening right now in the trial are a repetition of what they've been saying right along and the man uh, it's all after the fact there's nothing before the fact in other words he wasn't uh, he knew nothing about the situation uh, when he occurred it was after that he found out the different things Good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. okay um well <laughs> you want a minute to think yeah okay. any length you want to speak what is your opinion? Yeah, uh, the roots, and uh, just because he's in that position, uh, he does takes advantage of you know certain uh, roots that he has to follow, and uh, I think uh, a lot of people just act the same way, you know, and it's just that uh, 
Uh, they want to make a martyr out of him or something. And, you know, he's the one they caught, so he's the one that they want to stick it to, you know? You're a real lifesaver. Some of the feelings expressed in our poll are easily explained, since in 1972, Massachusetts voted overwhelmingly against Nixon, and its elected representatives have repeatedly called for his impeachment. But other opinions point to the fact that, no matter how serious a man's offense is, under the Constitution, he is still presumed innocent until he is proven guilty. From Copley Square, Mary McKay, Channel 5 News. Some of the feelings expressed in our poll are easily explained since Massachusetts voted overwhelmingly against Nixon in 1972 and many of its elected representatives have repeatedly called for impeachment. But other opinions point to the fact that under our Constitution, no matter how serious a man's offense is, he is still innocent until proven guilty. From Copley Square, Mary McKay, Channel 5 News.